Okay, let's talk about Capture One Mobile or Capture One for the iPad. This is the beta version and I want to have a first look, play around a bit, see what's what, how it works and what options you have. I had a quick play with it yesterday, but didn't really go too deep into it. So I have files on an SSD external drive, but I also will import from a camera SD card directly. And of course you have also access to your local files on your iPad. And you have to import files from external drives and SD cards to your local storage. Sadly, Capture One can't really work on external drives, but that is really an issue with iPadOS that doesn't really allow that. So I plugged in this drive here, SanDisk SSD, quite nice. And you go to Files, iPadOS, SSD, and then you can select stuff, long exposure, yes. This one, I just imported one photo now. By the way, it is imported to the local storage on the iPad. Capture One has a folder here, as you can see, and yeah, there it is. Anyway, back to Capture One. Let's see. So you have basic functionality. You have a star writing. So this is maybe three. If you double tap, you can also hide and show the histogram there. You can have the film strip removed, so to speak. So it's a basic interface, but it's well thought out. So star rating, color rating, which is fine. Then the next is the preset area. So you have presets and styles, so you can get a look quite quickly. Um, and you can select multiple at once. And you can also save custom styles later on as well. Yeah, I mean, this is nice to get a look or edit done quickly. Next up is the crop or aspect ratio or your straight tool, so to speak. You could move it around, but you also, I mean, yeah. And double tap resets that as well. Yeah, pretty straightforward, nothing fancy. Next up are the editing tools. So you have basic black and white options, just like Capture One with controls over the color values and stuff like that. All right, Ooh. color balance as shot. And you have all the access tungsten. Oh. <laughs> White for us and cool white, but you also can dial in, or you have the picker and could select a white. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't have any white in here, and as you can see, you basically don't need the pen at all. You have the left and right controls. You don't have to move hands or something. You don't have sliders. Um, pretty sweet actually. And it's really fine control, so you have to move it quite a bit. Brightness, saturation. Let's bring this puppy to life. Now it's a bit too warm. HDR highlights. Up the shadows quite a bit, make it really look HDR. <laughs> really want to push the highlights here. Whites, yes, push it. You have clarity, which is fine. Lightroom for iPad didn't have that quite a long time. Even the haze. Yeah, I wish you could switch the direction of this wheel like you could on the trackpad on Apple devices. You have even color control. You can select the color directly. So I could actually reduce this 
orange here, I think. Uh, reduce saturation. Yep. Brightness. Nice. Yeah, nice. And vignetting, of course. Tap and hold is before, after. Yeah, the engine is quite good. Noise reduction is nice as well. Maybe not as much. Film crane, okay. Sharpening. Mount. Radius. Threshold. Yeah, you get the idea. You have the most essential tools right in there. Now I would like to have more controls over vignetting. Layers would be nice to dial in a mask, uh, gradient and stuff like that would be nice or spot removal. I think those might come later on. But overall, it's snappy. It's well thought out. The controls are really nice with this concept of having the tool selection here and the wheel here. And you even could switch that tools on the right. Uh, which is nice for left hand or right hand people, uh, which is nice. The engine seems smooth and fast and the control you have over all those settings is really nice and it looks good. Now in terms of export, you have this here. So those are the export settings. Uh, you have the file name, the original, or you can make your own. So this is Night Berlin. No. Zero one, and you have JPEG, and you also could export a RAW and an edit file. We'll check that out in a minute. And then you have full resolution, a smaller web resolution, and you also have a Instagram version. And you could also have a watermark. I don't really use watermarks, but uh, there you go. Ooh. So let's see where it puts it in the middle. Uh, okay, <laughs> doesn't really make sense too much. I think you can't move it. No. Okay. Um, I hope they will add more options of that. So okay, let's export the Instagram version. Okay, export. Save image. Okay, I save it to the photos. And let's also export the raw edits and let's export this to the SSD. Save to files. As you can see, you can also save that to Dropbox and stuff like that if you have that connected to the iPad. Okay, save photos. Okay. I will check that edit file later on on my MacBook Pro. Okay, let's um, go ahead, go back and put in SSD card that comes straight from the A7R Mark III. Okay, as you can see, it picked up the camera device. Go browse. So now it loads stuff from this. It is a fast SD card. And it is a fast SD card reader. So it's limited by the iPad Pro connection here. So the newest, latest iPad Pro might be faster. All right, so you have all your photos here. Quite a few photos here from the latest graffiti job we shot. So let's import some. So the question is, can you zoom in? Not enough space, okay. Can I deselect all? Yes. Okay, as you can see, it shows how much drive space you have locally. I only have, I have the smallest uh, storage, so only have 26, so I can't import everything, but I can't really zoom in too much, which is a bit odd. It would be nice to have a full screen view, so I can actually see if I really want to import this photo, if it's sharp, if it's nice, 
So I really have to select with this view here. Hmm. As you can see with those photos here, would be nice to see if I really nailed focus. So I really have to import all of those to see if they are actually any good. Hmm. All right, especially with those, if the spray can is in focus. All right, let's import all those. So you can make albums, so um, name this graph one select those and select all add two okay here we go graph one add now they are in there now i can see which is what let's rate those Yeah, see, this is out of focus here. I actually can delete that right away. Delete. And here. Yeah, this is not, this is not in focus. And this is. So I couldn't really see that in the import window, which would have been nice. Okay, let's edit this. It's pretty sta straight. White balance. It was shade no that's too warm cloudy the good thing about the ipad is it is a really nice screen so i'm really confident that this is really nice yeah, and i really like those controls here i don't really need to use the pencil which is a bit sad though <laughs> yeah let's push this color Right there. Exposure. Yeah, bring down the highlights in a minute. Let's see what the histogram does. Yeah, shadows push those shadows a bit too much. We use a vignette anyways. What does the whites? Nothing. Clarity. Yes, we could. Structure. Yes, we really want to push that. Right there. Dehaze. Mm, not quite sure. This is shot with the 85 size badass. So I want this haziness. Color. Maybe we try to push that yellow a bit more. Or the orangey yellow green. <laughs> of course vignetting now i would like to have a bit more control over the vignette itself i mean you could select ellipse circular on crop which is fine you also have like presets here 16 by 9 to have it instagram story ready yeah hmm. <laughs> film crane a bit um, oh, silver rich, soft grain, cubic grain. Yeah, that's nice. Especially want, if you want to go for the black and white style. Okay, let's create a preset. Ah, okay. So, I see. So you can't really create a global preset, it seems. So the create preset is just for the tools you select custom style okay now you can do that in styles rating shape no adjustments okay i see okay now this works zero all right safe okay and you can copy the adjustments and when you go to the next photo There you go. Copy, paste, undo, copy, paste. All 
right, so there you have it. Overall, a nice concept. I like the controls and how it's set up. It's a bit sad that you don't have to use the pencil, but then again, this is really nice. You don't have to move your hands to switch between settings and switch them and dial them in, which is nice. Right now it's still beta version, so I think they will add more features and tools to it and more control about settings and export and stuff like that. But for a first version of this, it's great. I mean, this is made for on the road, on the go, to edit quickly something for a client, uh, for weddings or something like that. This is nice and I think I like it much better and works smoother than Lightroom on the iPad. So let's switch to the MacBook Pro and open up those files I exported and let's see how it works and if those edits translate to the big version and how I can work with that in Capture One on the MacBook. All right, let's connect this SSD from the iPad to my MacBook Pro and let's see what is what. So there are those files here, EJP. All right, let's go into the files, iPad, and let's see what's what. Okay. And let's see if anything is here. Exposure, yes, clarity, Yeah, it seems that all the adjustments translated to the full Capture One on the MacBook Pro here, which is fine and which is nice. So you can start the edit and selection kinda on the iPad Pro. Um, the selection is a bit different because yeah, I really need that zoom in functionality in the import window. And also, yeah, it is a bit bad or sad that I can't really work on the SSD directly. Maybe with the newer iPad and with the newer versions of iPad OS, that might be possible. But I really would like to work on SSD directly and have a session basically on this SSD and transfer that session to the Capture One on the Mac or PC or whatever directly. That would be nice. Now, also talking about all the options and tools. Now that I see all the tools I have in the full version of Capture One on the Mac, uh, yeah, I really miss the levels. Um, that would be nice on the iPad Pro and also curves. I really like to work with curves to dial in a look a bit more I really like that. So levels and curves would be nice on the iPad version. Mm, yeah, lens correction maybe, but not quite sure if that is really essential. Base correction, yes, I also like to use extra shadow and pro standard stuff like that. I don't really need layers, but yeah, could be interesting to have a bit more control over masks, but I think that might be a stretch on the iPad version, I think. But now I have more control about the vignetting and I could reduce the vignetting itself here. There you go. Also here, um, I would use a gradient Yeah, but overall, yeah, it's it's nice that you can start your edit on the iPad and transfer that to the big version on the Mac or your system. Yeah, but levels and curves would be nice. Anyways, yeah, pretty nice. I'm really excited because I really like Capture One. Uh, the color engine of Capture One is much better than Lightroom in my opinion. And overall the workflow and the tools are pretty good. The images just look better coming out of Capture One for my taste, in my opinion. 
and it's nice to have that on the go on the road quickly editing pictures there is nice on the ipad um, and it works smoothly anyways that's it that was just a nice first look and play with capture one on the ipad and what options you have in the beta version and i can't wait to see the full version maybe with levels and curves as well and zooming in on the import window those are the three essentials that are really missing i think okay see you in the next one back to work mm -hmm.